We're on? All right, cool. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Does This Movie Suck? Uh, my name is Scott. Uh, I'm getting ready to watch The Hot Chick starring Rob Schneider. I don't know much about the movie. I haven't read a synopsis. All I know is that he dresses as a woman. That's all I really know. That's all I care to know going into this. I'm going to write down some predictions, and we'll see how close I come to what actually happens in the film. All right, I have four sheets of paper here. Uh, first, I want to predict that the reason he's dressing as a woman is to reconnect with, let's say, a daughter. He's going to reconnect with his daughter. Join a sorority, maybe? Yeah, he's going to join a sorority and reconnect with his daughter. It's not making for exciting video, I mean, just writing with a pen you can't really see. Uh, I'm going to predict the ending. I think at the end, he's going to uh, give a heartfelt speech. The daughter will reject it at first, but ultimately accept it. How do you spell acceptance? A C C E. Accept. Is there a P in there? Should have paid attention in English class. Uh, I want to make a prediction about a couple jokes that might be in the film. The first is that he's probably going to get hit on by a man at some point in time. Vaguely uh, homophobic scene where he gets hit on by a man. Because uh, it's a happy Madison film, and that's not outside the realm of possibility. Let's see. Hit on by a dude. And then finally, um, there's probably going to be a scene where he's in the bathroom. Standing to pee. So, um... I think I'm ready to watch a Rob Snyder film. The Hot Chick is a 2002 film which has a whopping 22% on the Rotten Tomatoes tomato meter. It stars Rob Schneider, Anna Faris, and features the major film debut of Rachel McAdams. It's directed by Tom Brady. Hold on just one second. Hey Peyton, it's Scott. Uh, the guy who talks to his cat about football. Yeah, that guy. Um, quick question, is Brady directing movies now? Oh, different Tom Brady. Oh, the director of The Comebacks, Tom Brady. Okay, I got... Never call you again. Okay, bye. I pulled this movie from Roger Ebert's book, Your Movie Sucks, which I'm working my way through. Roger was not kind to this film. He gave it a half-star review. He writes, The MPAA rates this PG-13. It's too vulgar for anyone under 13 and too dumb for anyone over 13. Looking at the bigger picture, the reviews as a whole weren't kind. One critic wrote, I think it was written on a Denny's napkin the day before principal photography began. Another wrote, couldn't someone take Rob Schneider and have him change bodies with a funny person? Harsh, but were they right? Let's find out. Well, my predictions about this film were way off. I was wrong about the premise of the film, so my prediction about the ending was also wrong. I thought this was going to be a typical man dressing as a woman comedy, but reality was much, much dumber. The film starts in 50 BC. Roger points out that Brady and company are in the wrong part of Africa. Abyssinia is now known as Ethiopia, so Egypt, not so much. We meet a queen or a princess. The movie never really says which. The queen, let's just call her a queen, is being forced into an arranged marriage. So she pulls out a set of magical earrings which she splits with a friend. When they put on the earrings, their bodies switch forms. They switched forms, they didn't switch minds. This became oddly important as I fought to figure out the logistics of this film. Maybe I'm overthinking it. The film then moves to present-day high school. This transition I found to be very jarring. The script is written as if we know these characters already, but maybe we do. They're all stereotypes. Add to this that all these characters are terrible, terrible people. They're not funny, they're just bad people. Our main crew is made up of Jessica, played by Rachel McAdams, April, played by Anna Ferris, Lulu, played by Alexandra Holden, and Keisha, played by Marisa Murray. They all suck as humans. It's like Mean Girls without the comedy. The girls head to the mall where Jessica gets a rival arrested and seduces a boy into giving the girls free smoothies. The girls then steal some earrings out of an African-themed store. Yes, those are the same earrings from before. On their way home, they get some gas from a gas station, which so happens to be getting robbed by an unnamed man. He's played by Rob Schneider. The girls mistake this man as a gas attendant and are, of course, terrible to him. Sorry, accident. Oh, you're so bad. Isn't 
this scene horribly outdated? As far as I know, only New Jersey and Oregon have gas station attendants. Do people outside of those areas even know what full service is? Isn't there a more universal way to debase this character? The girls drive away, but somehow lose one of the two earrings. The unnamed man, played by Rob Schneider, finds the other earring. Don't even think for a second about how this might have happened. It's not worth it. Just chalk it up as a screenplay contrivance. You'll go through all five stages of grief trying to figure it out, so just don't. Jessica gets home and we meet her family. We meet Jessica's brother, who likes to dress up in Jessica's underwear and put on her makeup because, well, it's a screenplay contrivance and this movie's chock full of them. We also meet Jessica's boyfriend, who's played by a Lawrence brother. Jessica thinks that all her boyfriend wants is sex, while all he really wants is to be romantic without sex. We could sip hot chocolate and play Scrabble with my little brother? <laughs> you call it whatever you want. I'm still not having sex with you. And that's the entire joke. Because a miscommunication based on your girlfriend's assumptions will be hilarious for an entire hour and 40 minute movie. So it should be no surprise what happens next. Jessica puts on her earring, and the man puts on his, and bang, they switch bodies. This movie really isn't worth going into super detail over. The scenes from here on out fall into one of four categories. Number one, Jessica, who now looks like Rob Schneider, struggling to be a man. Think fast. You're good at that. Make it look so easy. <laughs> Number two, Jessica's friends revealing what they really think about her because she no longer looks like Jessica. Jessica has a problem. She's only going to make us wait an hour this time. What about the class trip to Six Flags? She took so long in the bathroom, we all missed the bus. Our parents had to drive three hours to pick us up. I had my period, okay? Number three, Jessica's family revealing what they really think of Jessica since she no longer looks like Jessica. We used to go out back on Sundays and toss a few baskets, shoot the shit. But she's got her own stuff going on now. Who could blame her? Whole family's falling apart. What? And number four, the girl is trying to hunt down Jessica's body. I think I know who's in Jessica's body. <gasps> and I know where we can find him. This movie is simply not memorable. It's really hard to remember anything that happens within the movie's running time. In my mind, it'll forever be known as that movie where Rob Schneider dresses up as a woman. I don't think it can be overstated how bad Schneider is in this movie. It's truly remarkable. I've never seen an actor fail at being believable at both genders. It's cringeworthy stuff. You always said you'd love me no matter what. And the rest of the film ticks all of the boxes on your Happy Madison Productions checklist. You have your unnecessary Adam Sandler cameo. It's actually a Senegalese lute carved from deer wood, used for fertility rituals. And cool. yeah. Oh, and you can put your weed in there. It's hard to be too mad about this character because he's involved in the only funny joke in the entire movie. You've got your mild to blatant homophobia. I'm so lesbian right now. That is the gayest thing I have ever heard. For me, a screaming orgasm on the beach with extra sugar on the rim. Yum! Gay, 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 gay. What's he doing? Some kind of tight queer dope. You'll never find another love like mine. You have your offensive cultural stereotypes. Ling Ling, you forgot lunch, baby pie. Chicken back with five vegetable, bulgogi, and kimchi. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> okay. You all learn real good now. There you are. You're the gardener from the service, right? See. Si. Fun fact, that character is called Korean Mother in the credits. She's not even given a name. And finally, you have Pratt Falls and Tackles. Beat that 
shit vector. T1. Hey, Billy. There's just an arrogance in the movies Happy Madison makes. They're paced and written as if they could do no wrong. This movie seems to be waiting for you to laugh, but when the laughs don't come, the scenes become super awkward. But later in the film, there's a couple scenes that made me realize how good this movie could have been. Could have been really good. Rachel McAdams is good, if not great, as the female victim of the switcheroo, but she's barely in the movie. Oh, thank God. I love you, baby. I would do anything for you. Yeah? Uh, how much money you got? About $40. That your car? That's my dad's. You know that. Yeah, cool. Give me the keys. Oh, thanks. Take it easy, Bobby. It's Billy. There's a virtual laundry list of these type of switcheroo movies where we focus on the male acting like the female, and there's only a handful of the other way around. I'd like to imagine a world where Rachel McAdams is the star of this movie. I'd like to imagine a world where Happy Madison didn't produce this movie. These thoughts bring me some sort of inner peace, really. But there's really not much to discuss here. This movie's not bad enough to be memorable. It's not good enough to be funny. It's the worst kind of comedy. It's simply meh. Were the critics unkind? Not really. It's a badly acted, lazy, unfunny film. I guess that kind of answers the question, does this movie suck? And with that, we cross another one off the list. Do you have thoughts about the hot chick? Why? Let's hear about it in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you can keep up on all of our episodes, and we'll see you next time when we ask the question, does this movie suck? Thanks for watching.